All right, everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast. Brought to you each and every time by Aura. Aura is committed to empowering people to take control of their personal health and daily routines by providing knowledge and guidance that helps improve the quality of their lives. That's a big statement. By tracking all these key metrics, sleep, activity, recovery, and really breaking down sleep, not just, uh, it, it, it's not just saying you, you slept good or you slept bad. Um, sleep cycles, core temp, heart rate variability, measure all these things that, uh, that the, the habits that you have acquired. Uh, I certainly can speak to this over 50 years, you know, see how it affects the most important thing when it comes to human performance and mental clarity and that's sleep. Head on over to Aura Ring. That's O-U-R-A ring.com. Check it out. There's our flow code. All right, we're talking about stage 14, Q mon ami Alan. Stage 14, Carcassonne to Kian. <laughs> he gets a bird chirp the in birds, every the, read. The, the Corsican birds. <laughs> Apparently Alan is back in town, so I think we should have him come by one day like we did last year and do a live you know, a live reading of some of these. He's got a, he actually he said he messed up stage 16, so he's going to have to come back. Well, who, know, who knows if he's back in town? And last I saw him was on top of uh, Four Corners with the derailleur of his bike was off off of his bicycle. <laughs> no way he can pedal. Right. And he was going to attempt to coast down the mountain. Right. And he bought home. he bought that bike off me a few years ago. He sent me a picture. He said he wants his money back. <laughs> his derailleur <laughs> hanger just ripped off. I said, oh, me désolé. Pas de... Pas de. <laughs> Not a great way to do your first ride after being in Europe, that's no. for sure. Yeah, well, he'll, we'll bring him by, have him do a live reading. Uh, today's show also brought to you by Amp Human and Momentus. This is, uh, we've talked about them quite a bit on the show, uh, newly merged, uh, sort of a create one superpower. They've got an exclusive offer for our listeners. It's called the Move Kit, right? So we talked about Amp Human and Momentus. The Move Kit is, is, is a mix of Momentus's recovery mix, which I think is the best protein powder out there. I know you're a big fan, George. Um, you know, recovery is, is, is essential. And then couple it with PR lotion, which is, um, is absolutely proven to work scientifically, uh, proven to work through many, many studies uh, to buffer lactic acid. So when you go out and start hammering and and really start feeling it, the muscles start hurting, you start slowing down. Well, that's lactic acid building up in the muscles. PR lotion, proven to buffer lactic acid. Now you can get both of these in the move kit. Uh, the Momentous Recovery Mix and Amp Human's PR lotion. And oh, by the way, they're going to throw in a free massage ball. George's got that got George's attention. Uh, and, and this is a hundred dollar package, but 30 bucks off for our listeners. Head on over to amphuman.com slash the move. That's the momentous recovery mix, the PR lotion, and a free massage ball and 30 bucks off. There's the flow code. And also today brought to you by Roca, badass athletes down there in Austin uh, who, who've created, um, I, I think, the best eyewear uh, product out there on the market, the performance stuff. Uh, the Matadors, uh, obviously their new shade, uh, just just crushing. See them, seeing them everywhere, seeing them in the Peloton as well. Plus the prescription glasses and the uh, uh, um, the Lola is back in stock. Uh, the the female sh- the the lady shade it was it was sold out, but they got it back in stock. Uh, head on over to Roca. That's R O K A dot com. Twenty percent off for our listeners at checkout. Just use the discount code the move Roca dot com. There's full code. Well, not a ton to talk about today. I know we've been so spoiled for 13 stages, more action than we've ever had. Yeah. And so today, if someone's tuning into the tour for the first time today, they're going, okay, what's the big deal? Well, yeah. but it's still a really tough day. You got some heavy hitters up in the breakaway, 127 degrees on the tarmac. So oh, you can imagine really? how hot these guys were. And you remember the roads in the Pyrenees, they get all sticky and soft. And we saw uh, Mike Woods, unfortunately, take a big tumble in the breakaway came back, but that's really not a fun time to crash like that in such a hard day. But these two guys, Michael Woods and Balke Molema, they, they've been, they've animated uh, a lot of these stages. So I think it's, I, I think it's great to finally see Molema win a stage. We saw him up there on the Mont Ventoux and, and, and just got ridden off the wheel of Wild Fun Art. But, you know, I love it when a guy just keeps plugging away and plugging away. It's like, no, all right, you know, cause believe me, it sucks to get second in a stage of the Tour of France it just doesn't even matter. But to see the guy keep at it, 
Yeah. Hats off. I mean, what a, what a gutsy ride and found the break and then went away from them and they just couldn't catch him. That like, last climb was nasty. Yeah. Like I mentioned a couple of days ago, we're going to start seeing more and more of the same guys in the breakaways. You have your GC guys, GC contenders. You got the guys that are still recovering well and getting strong climbers can get in the breakaways. And then you got your zombies that are just surviving. And of course you got the sprinters that are also trying to survive the mountain days for the flatter days. But um, there's all kinds of different uh, levels of recovery going on right now. And we're seeing a lot of the same guys making the breakaways. Could you elaborate on zombies? I did. Yeah, I was zombies. Ask, a lot is of, that a term? That it's actually not my term. term. It's some of the director's terms that you know I'm in quite frequently in touch with. They're saying, guys, some of these. They're saying to me, some of their guys are just zombies right now, just Meaning trying just, to survive, just fried, trying to you know just, hope and praying that they feel better when they wake up one morning. Go, okay, I'm feeling better. I'm back. But you know, at this stage in the race, and the heat's coming on, the mountains, the Pyrenees is still to come. It's a difficult task. Because Johan said that on our group chat yesterday that there's a bunch of zombies. I thought he. he got confused with mummies because so many crashes <laughs> the bandages. yeah you just get so much uh so many bandages you look like mummies but uh, zombies yeah this is especially you throw in the heat i mean guys are uh, mentally taxed physically taxed and then you layer in you know what are 120 degrees which is absurdly hot yeah um and did, you know you saw the roads today and 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 we uh, somebody asked yesterday about the difference between the pyrenees and the alps you just see it like it's just rugged like it's not you know there's no divas no. in the Pyrenees, man. I mean, it's, yeah, it's rugged. There's no straight roads. I mean, it was it was great to see uh, Balcom Oluma today just take the initiative and, and, and go in a moment where nobody would expect it. He even said on the, in this post-race interview where, you know, they had a really strong breakaway. You had Izita, I mean, you had Gail Martin, a bunch of solid world-class climbers in there. So typically you're going to expect one of those guys to go on the climb. Well, Balka took advantage and went on the downhill, got a little bit of a gap. And uh, just relied on them not really working well together, which is usually what happens when you have such strong climbers right behind you. And, you know, rode, what was it, the last 30 kilometers by himself. What an epic way to win a tour stage. Yeah. And a big day for Guillaume Martin. Moves huge, up, huge, huge day. Huge day. Moves up to, I'm surprised that, that that elicited no response from the, from the well, what was left of the Peloton. I mean, that... <laughs> we saw we saw EF come up for a bit to start um, trying trying to keep the, town, the time down, but then all of a sudden they stopped and they they went what looked like relatively easy the last two kilometers of, of the climb. Uh, the group did the leaders jersey group, uh, so it was interesting to see what happened. Perhaps they didn't have the the horsepower to keep climb pulling up that climb, but not sure why would they let him get so much time. Do, or maybe they just they they uh, they could be discounting him. Could also be, I mean, a lot of time, lots, of, lots of times in situations like that, there's a lot of politics going on. EF, the cars behind EF, talking to Ineos, talking to uh, Jumbo, like, hey, guys, let's work together. We got a guy coming into second place here in the overall. We need to share the workload. And the other guys are playing their bluff and say, no, you guys do the work. You want it more than we do. That could have most likely happened as well. Yeah, do they think uh, maybe that uh, Martin is a guy who can only go full gas like that for a day, like not over the, the remainder, yeah. right? I mean, I think you have to look at it and say, yes, yeah, so, you know, he's going to move up to second on GC, but um, we have, and if you look at the rest of the the, the stages in the Pyrenees, it, it seems like we have a week of them, but we don't. But I mean, you three or four more days, I think they're probably just thinking he's going to have, he's going to have a day where he loses 10 minutes, but I mean, who knows? Who knows? Let's not forget. He was in ninth place. It's not like he was that far behind before this. He, Clearly not climbing with the top five guys, but give a guy like that a six minute, you know, uh, head start back into the race, coming into the Pyrenees on a French team, super motivated. Never know. You might be able to hang on to that. And not an easy day when it came to vert either. 9,200 feet of climbing. This is just going to keep adding up and adding up and adding up. It's just, that's a big day also. Yeah. 3,000 inter meters. Interestingly enough, you said uh, the race had never finished in Keon before. But, but that's what they, that's what I, I didn't know that, but that's, that's what I they think said you said that, but we've no, definitely they said it on TV. So I, yeah, I believe it. We've definitely raced through it many times. I know that I have, and they have a post race criterion that I did once or twice. And it was very close to our home in Girona. For a lot of you guys that don't know what those are, they're just kind of like WWF racing. You roll up, you know, you get a little <laughs> bit of start money, the world then, wildlife fund. <laughs> WWF, it's now they had to change the they name. Had to change, sorry. Yeah. After the tour, 
a yeah. lot of the stars of the tour get paid a lot of money. Is it more yeah. of an exhibition? Yeah. yeah, it's more of an exhibition. You get there, you you, sh- you go to the riders' meeting, they tell you, hey, you're going to win the race, you're going to get second, <laughs> you're going to attack with this many k-, k to go. And it's a show. by the way, don't go too hard. Keep it in like the 15 and make it look like you're going really hard. <laughs> right. So it's kind of funny. A lot of these guys. Uh, it do really that. is like the WWE. It yeah, is totally. orchestrated. Like and if you go too hard, you'll get people get pissed. Like, dude, this is not a real race. Like, slow down. We don't want to suffer that much. It's more for the fans to see the get yeah. up, get up close, and they'll get. A huge amount of spectators. Hmm. Uh, it's a it's one of the few events in cycling where lots of times the spectators have to pay to get into the course and uh, watch the stars of the Tour de France race race against each other. And you got that paper bag uh, at the riders' meeting too, as well, right? You get the paper. Yeah, no a paper bag, like a like a like a sack of Correct. paper. <laughs> Should we, should we talk about that too? Or? Probably not. No. no, you don't want to talk about that. <laughs> My paper bag was not nearly what as big as yours. What is the statute of limitations sure. for the IRS? <laughs> hey, we had, we had, of all we, people, I should not be talking about this. Yeah, we had um, we did a really fun one in Prague. I don't know if you remember that one, Lance. We rolled in. Um, I've never been to Prague. Super excited. The organizers got us this amazing like chateau, ten miles from the city. And I was like, wow, this is beautiful. At the same time, I was thinking, man, I kind of would have wished we were in town. Like, uh, you know, I've never been to Prague before. I wanted to walk around to the shops. Here we are about 20 minutes, 30 minutes outside of town. I'm unpacking my bag with my wife. All of a sudden, my phone rings. And he's like, it's Lance. Don't unpack. We're going to the Four Seasons downtown. <laughs> <laughs> they shut this whole place down for us, the four organizers. And we stayed by, I think, 10 minutes. <laughs> you like that story. Yeah, I do. I love I, that story. Uh, but I think, I, I, I think you had expressed some, you know, some, some frustration that we were that far away. I just need to hear it once. You're like, oh, man, it'd be cool if we were in town. And I go back to my room and I'm like, it just keeps echoing in my head. Like George isn't happy. George isn't oh, happy. We're too on. far from town. He cannot go shopping. <laughs> he could not find a potential tennis park. All these things. And I said, fuck it. Let's go. We're going <laughs> we're out. Hey, dur- during, <laughs> during the run, the tour run, was that, was that the end of the season for you guys? Or was there more racing after that? Well, that's for for Lance, a lot of times it was. Oh yeah. I, you know, a lot of us. Work at bees. We had to keep racing for a couple months after that. Yeah. Done. You win the tour. I see you. Ready to go yeah, home. I was, yeah, <laughs> I was done. We would do the criteriums. Um, you know, some of those years there was the, the Olympic year. You know, I had to keep racing. Uh, but but this this idea that and you know Pogachar is talking about doing the Vuelta. Like no way. What? No. Yeah. Hundred percent no. By the way, some interesting news. I mean, he had, as far as I could tell today, just an easy day. The, 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 this guy's just got it in cruise control right now. But um, as is expected, when you have somebody that's that dominant um, and explosive, there's questions. And so uh, I think he's handled it very well. His coach, Inigo, uh, uh, yeah, him, yeah. Uh, chimed in and said, um, it's, it said he hasn't even – Pushed himself. He hasn't gone full gas. He hasn't yet. gone full gas. So, <laughs> and he compared and, it to last year. He's not even hit numbers that he hit last right. year. And and they do have it down to a perfect science. Like that, the, they he knows, right? He knows how much he weighs. He knows what his power meter says. So he knows. And I'm and and, and I insist. And you guys disagreed on the Von Two stage. I I think he I think he just let let uh, Ingegard go. There was no crack. Well, there's no there's no doubt that that's a, you know a very powerful, profound statement, um, being that we're in stage 14 of the Tour de France. But I do remember uh, 2012 when Wiggins was leading the, the yellow jersey. Um, Chris Room said something similar to one of my teammates that uh, coming into the Pyrenees, he, he was lying in second place overall, and he had not hit threshold yet. And after you know, 13, 14 stages of the Tour de France, wow. which for a rider like myself in the middle of the Tour, completely exhausted, I, that's mind boggling. But yeah, these guys are next level strong for sure. You think Michael Woods? He's, I'm a little worried. He hit the he hit when he slid out there, and he just lost his front wheel and didn't have any. A lot of times, you can c- kind of uh, break your fall. He just went straight on the hip. I hope that left hip is okay. But you think he keeps trying? He's got. I mean, he's this guy. Absolutely. I, I mean, yeah. he, you saw him fight back. You know, come back and. Not only that, mentally, it's really tough to keep bombing these descents after you've crashed like that in your head. You can see at first he was a little bit hesitant coming around the corners, but then quickly forgot about what just happened, caught back up. 
you know, got real aggressive again. Molomo was already away at that point, but ended up getting more points on that last climb and now in the lead of the mountain jerseys, which is a massive deal. I know you don't like the polka dot jersey, but for a team like Israeli Cy- uh, Cycling Academy, that's a huge deal. I think it's they're uh, going to fight all the way to the end for I that. D- I don't. I don't. I, I never said I don't like it. I, I don't like it when a guy who gets dropped on an overpass has the climber's jersey. You were warming up to it when it was Quintana because he's a true climber. He's a true climber, and, and Michael Woods is is uh, is earning it, right? And and um, the second Canadian to ever wear the polka dot jersey. Alex Stita was the first many many years ago, but. Yeah, I, I think a guy like him right now, as much as as aggressive as he's being, getting in the break, sprinting for the points, give him the jersey. I mean, he, and, and he can climb. It's this is not it's not a guy that's out the back on the climbs. What do you mean, give him the jersey? He's fighting for the jersey. <laughs> he has the jersey. <laughs> I know, but like well, I'm saying, he's worthy. <laughs> oh, he's worthy. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm not just going to hand no. it to him. No, I'm not going to criticize. It's a big it, battle. No. Great. Okay, I, I mean, see. look, we we d- d- we know who the best climber in the race is. Yeah. Right. And so, but okay. I, I, listen, I'm not going to win this. I don't want to argue with you guys. Which, by the way, uh, let's not forget, Pogachar won the Polka Dot jersey last year. Okay. So we still have a bunch of climbs left to go. And it's, it's not going to be an easy task for Woods to keep this jersey, but he's going to go all in for it. You know, something I could bring up now, it was in several, several comments and questions to you guys, is that is given the, the uh, current talent is the young rider's jersey either need to go away or be revamped? Yeah, to, like, like, it's... There's what, what, there's so many... Uh, the best riders are under 23. Well, the, 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 that's... Uh, you could lower the age. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, that's a great point. We have not... I don't think we've... It's seen, not going to go away because they sell the sponsorship for it. Right. Yeah, well, they took it away. They took it away for a while. I think Did they, they re-implemented it a, a couple of years ago. It was definitely gone for really? some time. Um, it's a great thing to see, but uh, we haven't really been in, a, in an era where the the riders that are leading the Tour de France are so young. This is a whole new thing. Yeah, for us. yeah, it's it, it's Pogacar for the second year, Bernal. We yeah. see it. He's always in the youngest rider jersey. It just doesn't seem to have the significance it used to. No. Lower the age. I mean, what are we going to see now? 19-year-olds in the Tour de France? I mean, that's that's the answer is no, but you know, you wouldn't ever have expected to see this many young. It's, it's, it, you know, it was generally thought of, historically thought of as kind of an older man's game. You'd come into your prime at what, 27? 30, 30-ish, yeah. 30. Yeah, late 20s, early 30s. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a different game. I don't know. Yeah. But, but it's fun to watch, so. Well, there, I mean, there, a lot of the guys are saying that all these, these guys like Pogachar, these young riders are, you know, at the age of 15, 16, they're already doing these super specific intervals and they're all in. It's like they have no other, um, you know, distractions or anything going on in life except to try to get to the top level of cycling. And we're seeing them getting there a lot quicker than we have in the past. Mm. Hey, today's show also brought to you by Hyper Ice. What a cool product. We've been fans of this, uh, George and I, for a long time. I've been a, a, a consumer of theirs for, for many, many years. This this is the new Hyper Volt Go. This thing's game changer. Watch this thing. Get my, just get my get my neck all warmed up for today. Come That's my pre, pre-show routine. Hitting Ooh, that thing. We got some video, of George. Um, just these shows stress him out. He's got to rub out his legs before the show and everything. But uh, uh, fourteen of the twenty-three teams in the Tour de France uh, active users of all the high price products, not just the compression. Uh, devices, but the Normatec 2.0 compression systems. This is a new acquisition that they just made. Um, every, everybody over at that team, uh, Jim, the CEO, and, and the whole crew, they're just innovating, innovating. Anyway, I love it. Love this, uh, love this brand. Uh, Hypervolt and Normatec are both on sale right now. And for a limited time, exclusively for our listeners, say 15%, head on over to hyperice.com. And with the code Lance15, that one five is for the 15% off. There's our flow code. That's uh, hyperice.com, and the code is Lance15. Last one of the day, today's show also brought to you by Element, um, which I realize I kind of been screwing up. I, I, I see Element T, and I, 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 first of all, I'm a massive fan of this. This is my hydration solution and has been for a couple of years now. Uh, Element is, is, the thing about it is it's, uh, I sweat a lot. I just, uh, as George knows, and like to make fun of, uh, this is, is what I've found to be the best replacement for me. And it's got no junk in it. 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium, and a bunch of fans out there, you know, not, not just this show, but guys like Tim Ferriss and people who really know how to push themselves and hack certain systems. 
uh, it absolutely works, right? And uh, also, ooh, uh, new flavor alert, grapefruit salt. Also, we got watermelon salt. Uh, no sugar, no gluten, no artificial ingredients, and uh, and sort of a and a, a, a money back guarantee, or, or what does they say? Give it to a salty friend if you don't like it. Special offer for our listeners. Uh, they can purchase an element sample pack for the cost of shipping, which is only five bucks. Each sample pack includes eight packets of element, two citrus, two raspberry, two orange, and two unflavored. This offer is limited to one time per customer. Head on over to drink slash the move. There's our flow code and get your sample pack just for the cost of shipping. I got my bottles. I've already got my bike ready for the ride. After this, I got the bottles loaded up. Um, Grapefruit salt, We're ready, bro. Oh, great. I'm going to have to rush out of here, get ready as well. Yeah. George's family has had an interesting couple of days. You know, the fam's coming out. Uh, he was starting, you know, gets a little soft and starts whining. <laughs> but they had travel day from hell. Yeah. Like, where are it's they not now? over Let's, yet. We it's should, we to should just have like a tracker on them. Like they went Greenville to what, Dallas, and then they were supposed to go to Denver and then here. Then they ended up in Dallas and then Phoenix, Phoenix. and then back to Denver. Oh, and, and now... Yeah. Now they're in, an, and this is amazing because it gets to this story I didn't even know till last night. They're now in an Uber, which about is, to be, in the Uber. which is a, a large shareholder of this company. I'm very glad they're in this long Uber ride. But uh, <laughs> from from Denver, I mean, who takes an Uber from Denver to Aspen? But then, of course, then I didn't hear what George. I never knew what you said last night. This is new news. Oh, you want me to tell the story? Yes, this is. Uh, so I was at an event in New York City, uh, finished on a Thursday. It was the weekend of the solstice. I don't know if you all remember the solstice, but apparently South Carolina was like peak viewing area for the solstice. So I was with Christian. For the Van- whole country. For the, well, yeah. One yeah, of the, that was one, one of the best one of the, places. One of the best places to go. So I was with Christian Vanderbilt. We just finished this event. We were hightailing to the airport. I get a notification. Flight's canceled. All right, no big deal. I get on the phone. Like I was flying from Newark. You know, rebooked me through LaGuardia. Nope, no options. JFK. Nope, no options. Philly, nothing. And she's like, I can get you home. This is Thursday, 6 p.m. She's like, I can get you home by Monday, 7 p.m. This is Thursday. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wait, what? So I'm calling all my people, calling Lance's friends with the jizzies, nothing. I got yeah. no no love. Well, anyway, the Uber driver looks back. He's like, I'll take you. And I'm like, wait, what? How much? He's like, 1500 I was like, let's roll. <laughs> so oh, my god. Christian and I rolled to uh, South Carolina. 11 hours? 11 hours. We got in about uh, 7 a.m. What kind of three, car? Three gas Surely shops. It was like remember. a little like Toyota, like mini uh, SUV sort of thing. Man. What is, is Solstice? Is, is, what, I don't even know what Solstice is. Is that like a gratitude list or some other hippie thing you do? <laughs> What, what is that? I got some good pictures. Maybe we'll put them up later. The, Wait a second. The, the so, party we had uh, that was able to make because of the what? That's that's, driver. that's certainly the longest Uber ride I've ever heard of. But maybe for our listeners, just, just and he might have you know notes. he might have shut off the Uber app. I'm not sure what exactly what happened, but it was it, that was the, the the original. I wonder what the record. Way. I wonder if wow. anybody's ever been in L.A. and gotten in an Uber and said, "Can you drive me to New York City?" It has to be somebody that just, just as a gag. Tell you what, I was desperate. I was not going to spend the next four days in, uh, in New York city. As much as I love his his family's adventure, the the dog is in tow. You have the dog. Uh, We got, we got the dog in tow. (laughs) The Luca got got sick in the plane. Luca got sick in the plane. Oh no. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to have to get uh, (laughs) Melanie a spa treatment or something when she gets here. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't let her drive, which is amazing. Is your son bringing his bike? Is Enzo bringing the bike? Well, I, I'm apparently borrowing one of Lan- two of Lance's bikes, ah. mountain bike and road bike. So I know you dropped that on out. me last night too. Uh, no, I actually dropped that on you last month, uh. and you gave me the uh, thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look at tomorrow. Yes. Uh, the highest point. Yeah, uh, to, yeah, it is another day. Uh, well, another day in the Pyrenees, and, and a finish in a foreign country. We finish in Andorra. Downhill finish. Downhill finish. I know, but we're we're gonna. I just these days bum me out to look at, but we got a couple uphill finishes coming. Uh, cool thing about tomorrow is, and, and this is every year uh, d- during the tour, the highest point in the tour, so the highest elevation, is the souvenir Henri de Grange, which is generally considered to be the father of the Tour de France. So that's tomorrow at 2,408 meters, which is the only reason I know how high it is because I know Aspen's 2,400 meters, so that's 8,000 feet. That is the very highest point in the tour. And then of course, downhill finish, uh, into Andorra, 
which I think is, is, as I think about this and Enios is just not having, um, they're just not having a good, a good tour, but we, we've talked about in the past, their, their sports director, who was a guy that we raced with, uh, died tragically very young, uh, Nicholas Port, uh, it w- was, uh, was French, but lived in Andorra. So I, I have a feeling there, this is going to be, you're going to see some emotion out of them tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to see it too. Like you said, they're the biggest team in the Peloton. Um, the chances of them unseating Pogachar are getting smaller and smaller. And I feel like they need to stop trying to control the race, make it hard on Pogachar. That's not really working. They have the guys to go in the breakaway. They have guys that live in Andorra, like Te- Teo Gegenhart. I'd love to see them make a breakaway and uh, go for the stage one. Yeah, I think so. I think that's, uh, I think when the, let's not forget tomorrow starting uphill, straight uphill as well. Uh, so it's going to be a brutally hard day for the sprinters. Uh, hopefully they stay and remain together. We're at a good pace in the valleys and on the downhill. And that's the only way they'll make it to the finish within the time cut. And I time cut, we're, yeah, we're getting down there. Where are we now? We've got only 149 riders left and we've got, I don't know, three or four days in the Pyrenees here. Ooh. I know I, I can't help but think pre-tour, I think all of us made the assumption that Carapaz would be on the podium. Yeah, which is still a very, very high possibility. I mean, he's right there in fifth place, I believe, and um, riding super strong. I think he'll get better. He's got the Grand Tour experience, um, but he's got a, he's got no slouchers ahead of him with Iran, now Martin, and Vindegaard. These guys are all riding really well, and it's going to be a huge battle for the podium. I still can't get over the fact that uh, Rigoberto Uran was training in Miami. Yeah, he was training in South Beach. A couple of my boys <laughs> this. on uh, Drunken Dragon Racing would ride with him a few times. And I'm like, well, he's in South Beach right now training. He's like, I'm just mind boggling. So the fact that he's right there amongst the best right now is just it's just crazy. It's mm. actually super cool to see. It's, it flies in the face. Of, I mean, look, you you have what going in was our pre race favorite Primus Roglic, who spent weeks and weeks and weeks in Tenerife on top of the the Taya, the volcano there, eight thousand feet there. And, and and the complete he's, opposite. He's yeah. in South Beach. What's up? Well, let's not forget he's from you know he's from Medellin, lives at high altitude, and he was going back and forth. So it's not like um, I mean a lot of these guys they have to go away from home and find that altitude. We're seeing that more and more. These guys are not they're never home anymore. They go from race to altitude camp. But uh, Ron is lucky in that sense that he lives at altitude and is able to take advantage of the. Why know. do you, why is it called Medellin when there's no I don't there's no G or J and there's two L's Medellin baby. Oh, okay. uh, now I heard the Medellin, but you always say Medellin. Some people say Medellin. Some people say Medellin. George takes a lot of liberty with his pronunciation. Which I did a live interview <laughs> with Caracol, the biggest uh, Colombian radio station. Yeah, It's just awesome to hear them. You know, they're just so animated about the race, so animated about the Colombians. We had two Colombians in the breakaway today, a Colombian fighting for the podium. They, they got a lot to talk about there. Yeah. Yeah, that country's back. You know, you talk about. uh, I was hoping you were going to cue cue the music. I thought you'd be you weren't (laughs) you weren't ready for that. Well, it 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 can get us flagged in in the on the socials Uh, if I'm not careful. We were we We were some. If you guys are members and we're part of the you know our our production meeting, you would have heard us jamming some Iron Maiden before the show started. Oh my gosh! I wanted to ask you because you were talking about Roglic doing and a lot of the guys doing altitude camp and of course Iran going to Miami, which is very funny. I think you would be able to answer this well, Lance, that, that as in the last few years, you've been going back and forth from Austin to Aspen. Yep. How long does that altitude effect last when you go? When you go down? When you go down. Oh, I mean, the, I, I'd say I three, three to the, four the, weeks. The last, I know the effect when you co- go in because yeah, I'm the, like yeah, you're a wreck it, for the yeah, first. The last week here. ten years, I haven't really been monitoring my you know my performance on the bike, but it, I don't know a couple good, weeks, bro. A good three weeks. weeks. I mean, yeah. and I want to be clear too. It's not like Iran was going to Miami because of the training. I think he, there was personal family reasons he was doing that, mm-hmm. but he clearly made the best of it. And uh, it's just like I said, it's awesome to see. Yeah. Questions, comments, yeah, still concerns. I'll, th- <laughs> I'll throw this first one out because you just brought up the Iron Maiden uh, guys. Jimmy DeGrasso, drummer of in Megadeth, yeah. was a neighbor buddy in Los Gatos, California. Awesome cyclist on dirt and road. Loved light speed rigs. Fun times on wheels with him. Lovely guy. That's from Will in Ireland. Wow. Yeah, you know Megadeth is another. I never really. Um, I mean, I, I know most people know the history with, uh, with Dave Mustaine and, and Metallica and Megadeth, and I, I, ne- I never really got into uh, to Megadeth much. But um, boy, we are going down the metal rabbit hole here. This is <laughs> I didn't, and I didn't know uh, DeGrasso was a cyclist. That's awesome. 
Yeah, here's a comment from YouTube, a uh, screen name Helium Trophy. The Polish word for uh, pancake is Nelishnik. <laughs> awesome. Don't so be that's a Nelishnik. Nelishnik. By the way, we still have an APB out for Noosa. Um, I sent she her, emailed, I thought. She I, did email. Yeah. I sent her a note, I uh, emailed her, and I said, you are uh, AWOL. MIA. We need some Noosa content. She's been busy with work, and uh, she said she was going to do her best. To oh, did she say that? Yeah. Well, she, she, she said she, it to you. She's been texting George. Like, no, no, yeah, no. she's in slide, <laughs> sliding into George's DMs. We should also cover the... Uh, we got some action on the uh, on the We Do segment challenge over there in Brevard. Uh, brought to you by Outside Plus. What is the latest? Well, the women's leaderboard. George's DM pal. Beata still in second. Jill Patterson... Leading by 59 seconds. That's right. a big gap. Can be hard a big to close gap. That. Evie Edwards up there as well. And the kid, Ben Wright, to bust this out in the middle of a long training ride, 10 seconds faster than Tyler Orschel. Not Horschel, but Orschel. We're getting pushed further and further back. Yeah, on no, the we do segment we, ladder. We, are, we won't even be <laughs> in the – we, we won't be top 10 in our age group. Exciting. Thanks, Outside Plus. This is this is this is cool, and we got about a week to go, folks. So if you want to go out there and uh, go for the cash prize or just go for the age group prizes, you better get busy and make that ride public as soon as you do it. No hiding that thing, and no pros, and and no pros. That's right, no profies. No All right. profies. Uh, here's another question. Can you, this is from Bob? Can you shed some light on why some riders appear to crash way more than others? Lance never crashed. I wouldn't say never. He right. taken down. Right. Uh, never crash, but Garrett Thomas always seems to be hitting the deck. It's not like crashes can be predicted. So is there an inner skill or sixth sense? Yes, there is. Some some guys are just better on the bike. Um, and I'm surprised. He's right about Garrett Thomas. And it, 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 I don't know, because Garrett Thomas came from the track. Typically, track riders are damn good bike handlers, damn good you know, uh, uh, you know, know, on the bike, in the pelt, comfortable, right? I don't know if he just uh, sort of absent-minded, or but he does crash more often than you would think. And some guys had really good guys keeping them out of trouble. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. That's it, a big part I, of the game. I, you know, and I that, at the yeah. tour especially. George, um, I was an okay bike handler. I wouldn't. I mean, there's examples out there that make that the lead people to believe that I was a, a much better bike handler. You know, right into that the field thing. That was a lot of luck, but. Um, you know, there's some guys you just see him and you just get away. You're like this motherfucker. He's he is sketchy. You just get away from him. Yeah, they, some, and they some, have sometimes, a reputation. Sometimes no, full 100%. teams. If you got you know, back in our day, if you got behind the iron jerseys on a downhill, he's like, oh, hell's no, I ain't staying here. <laughs> Go yeah. run, uh, run, run for the hills. Uh, here's another one. I'm a loyal listener to all three podcasts. P- Pogachar does not want to release his power data claiming it would give his competitors too much of an advantage. However, some of his competitors do provide that to the public. What advantage is he referring to that others apparently don't worry about? That's from uh, Orion in Belgium. I did see some numbers. I don't know if they were public or not, if we can share, but we'll find out. Um, so we might have some scoop there for our next shows. Yeah. I mean, it's his, those, those are his numbers. That's the, in, until, you know, somebody comes along and says that, that, um, you know, these, the, 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 this particular piece of data should be public. It's theirs. So they can, if you don't want to share them, well, don't share them. I, I also think it would be cool if, uh, if that was part of the show, right. And that was part of the content and you could, you could see real time power output. Like, you know, we were talked about it while we were watching the other day during the sprint, like imagine this quick step lead out, like imagine the numbers you're seeing. Yeah, Dude, they're huge. I mean, it'd be mind-boggling for that. Would that would be, and again, assuming uh, uh, or presuming that it would be accurate, people would be blown away to watch that. Not only that, even a um, boy Vindegards or however you say it. I know we're still screwing up numbers going up to Cole Rates. I mean, they had to have been crazy high uh, power to weight numbers. Yeah, yeah, that climb. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be. You're right. Real time data, watching that train, and then you'd see. The front guy, it would spike, and you'd watch it, and you go, "How long can he hold that?" You know, twenty seconds, and then, you know, the the, the number two guy, you see him move forward, it spike. Yeah, on and the on watts. the climbs, and then you go a layer deeper, and then you you know, because really, the 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 most important uh, data point is power to weight, 
right? So then, you know, obviously heavier guys put out more watts and lighter guys put out less watts, but the power to weight that, that number, like you're seeing somebody just tempoing up a climb at seven watts per kilo, you're like, damn, that's cool. Yeah. Also, the air and the lead outs, the aerodynamics are coming to hu huge into play and uh, being able to recover. Some some of these guys, you know, they're expected to start pulling at 5K to go and one pull is not going to be able to do it. You, ideally, you have three guys swapping off for the next two to 3K and then the main sprinter guys take over. And then in the time trials. Yeah. I mean, we're just we're, we're just riffing because that, that's not, um, you know, that, that's not part of the, the play right now, but it would be cool. And the radios, you've mentioned that many times too. Oh my. That would be exciting. Uh, the radio talk has died down, thank goodness. Yeah. Yeah. There's that I haven't heard I haven't seen any arguments lately that they should ban radios. Yeah. Well, it's fun. On on socials you'll see a camera inside the team car when they've got a rider winning and it's bonkers. Right. They they go crazy. Yeah, that, well, that's good stuff. It's this this is uh you know, won one stage in the tour and you can almost call the season a success. Now we're up to eight winning teams of the Tour de France. Yep. Uh yep. so one more team put it on the list and yep. uh, the Sega, rest of them more and more. And more. Yep. Team Segafredo. <laughs> <laughs> well they yeah, they're breathing a sigh of relief. They yep. got their stage. Absolutely. Yep. Um well deserved too. Yeah, uh, I mean it. Well, well deserved. Well, well that, deserved. We'll, we'll see more of Balcomolema in the Pyrenees. Guarantee you that. If you want to write to us, the move at we do dot team. And then I also wanted to mention one thing because we've had one little, and this is an iTunes thing. It's not us. There was one little hang up on it releasing for La Movida. Mm -hmm. And then JB Squared had an, that same issue yesterday. So if, and most people do use iTunes as their provider. So if that happens to you and it's an, it's an iTunes problem, you can go to we do dot team, mm -hmm. the website and just click and listen there or go to one of the other. Yeah. I mean, Google Spotify, Play, Spotify, Spotify. Exactly. YouTube. You should be watching this show. Look at these guys. Look at this get up here. <laughs> How are we not? I mean, all the, we don't have any Joe Natali slides today, but I mean, the, you're missing out if you're not watching it. Absolutely. And a lot of people are watching it apparently, but yeah. uh, primarily to look at George. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I was just, yeah, if it's not in your feed at the usual time, yep. uh, go to yep. we do team and you can pull it up there. Yeah, perfect. All right. Well, we'll do another day in the Pyrenees tomorrow, finishing in Andorra. Wait, incoming. Do we have incoming scoop, George? Uh, no, not yet. I was trying to get some scoop um, confirmed. This is, but this is several days in a row that the that George's sources have just gone dry. Correct. I mean, bone dry. My peeps need to start reaching back out. And we need Mark Cavan to show the show when he breaks, <laughs> breaks the record. Yeah. Cav going to make it through the Pyrenees? I think so. I mean, I haven't, you know, today I don't know exactly what happened, but he was in a good group. Actually, eight guys is not a huge group. No. Um, so tomorrow's going to be a real uh, decisive day for him. I'm sure he can dig deeper than he ever has <laughs> to get yeah, over the climb. Going to have to. Yeah. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow for another day of uh, action-packed uh, um, stuff in the Pyrenees. <laughs>